order of business in September is always to elect a new chair. This would generally be uh, done by the seated chair. Uh, we do not have a currently seated chair. So uh, as per board policy 1.200, uh, any board member can start the board meeting. It has been the practice of this board to have the longest served board member do that. Uh, in this case, that would be Dr. Gentry. So at this time, I'd like to turn it to Dr. Gentry to facilitate the election of a chair, a vice chair, and a legislative network representative. Thank you, Dr. Severe. Um, so as uh, Dr. Severe has stated, this is in accordance with our board policies. So at this time, I would like to uh, open the floor for nominations for board chair. Nominations for board chair. Dr. Gentry? Ms. G Ms. Poopal Walker, do you have a nomination for chair? I do. I would like to nominate Christian Bugs to be chair of the Board of Education for the 2021 school year. Thank you very much. Ms. Pupo Walker has nominated Chris, Ms. Christian Bugs. Are there any other nominations for board chair? Any other nominations? Yeah. Dr. Gentry, we need a second on that. We don't need a second for board nominations. You are, you are correct, I stand with you. Any other nominations for board chair? Hearing none or seeing none either, um, I would like to now call for the vote. And Dr. Severe, will you facilitate the roll call vote, please? Yes, this vote is on uh, new chair, uh, Ms. Christian Bugs. Uh, Dr. Gentry? Aye. Dr. Gentry votes aye. Ms. Elrod? Aye. Ms. Elrod votes aye. Ms. Masters? Aye. Ms. Masters votes aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney? Aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney votes aye. Ms. Bugs? Aye. Ms. Bugs votes aye. Ms. Bush? Don't believe, if you'd allow me a moment, I don't believe Ms. Bush has joined yet. Uh, Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Poopa Walker? Aye. Ms. Poopa Walker votes aye. Uh, Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Ms. Bush, have you joined? Ms. Bush has not made it yet. Uh, uh, Madam Chair Bugs, you have uh, eight eyes. Thank you, Mr. Severe. Uh, there are eight votes for Ms. Bugs for board chair. Congratulations, Ms. Bugs. I would now like to open the floor for nominations for vice chair. Are there any nominations for vice chair? I would like to nominate Rachel Ann Elrod for uh, vice chair for the 20, for the 2020-21 term. <laughs> Very good. We have a nomination for Ms. Rachel Ann Elrod for board vice chair. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, close the ballot. Mr. Severe, will you facilitate the roll call vote? Dr. Gentry? Aye. Dr. Gentry votes aye. Ms. Elrod? Aye. Ms. Elrod votes aye. Ms. Masters? Aye. Ms. Masters votes aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney? Aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney votes aye. Ms. Bugs? Aye. Ms. Bugs votes aye. Ms. Bush is not joined yet. Uh, Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Poopa Walker? Aye. Ms. Poopa Walker votes aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Uh, vote is eight ayes. Thank you, Dr. Severe. Congratulations, Ms. Elrod, for serving as vice, elected to serve as vice chair of the board. Finally, we will open the floor for nominations to our representative to the Tennessee Legislative Network. Do we have any nominations? I'd actually like to make one. I'd like to nominate uh, Ms. Jeannie Pupo Walker to serve as our TLN representative. Are there any other rep nominations for TLN representative? Any other nominations for ten TLN, Tennessee Legislative Network representative? Hearing none, the nominations are polls. Dr. Severe, will you facilitate the roll call vote, please? Dr. Gentry? Aye. Dr. Gentry votes on Ms. Elrod. Aye. Ms. Elrod votes on Ms. Masters. 
Aye. Ms. Masters votes aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney? Aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney votes aye. Ms. Bugs? Aye. Ms. Bugs votes aye. Ms. Bush has still not joined. Uh, Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Pupa Walker? Aye. Ms. Pupa Walker votes aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Uh, there are eight ayes. Thank you so much, Dr. Sevier, and congratulations. Ms. Pupa Walker is being elected as the board's representative to the Tennessee Legislative Network. I will read this one final statement. Um, this meeting is being held virtually in accordance with Governor Bill Lee's Executive Order Number 16 that allows local governments to hold public meetings electronically during the COVID-19 health crisis. With that, Madam Chair, Christian Bucks, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Gentry, and thank you colleagues for electing me. I am so excited and look forward to this next year. Uh, but we'll go ahead and jump into the consent agenda. If uh, anyone would like to pull something from the consent agenda, please let me know now. All right, I think that's appropriate think time. We'll go ahead and call for uh, a motion to pass the consent agenda as listed as we no longer read this. Madam Chair, I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All right, Dr. Sevier, would you mind a roll call vote? Dr. Gentry? Aye. Dr. Gentry votes aye. Ms. Elrod? Aye. Ms. Elrod votes aye. Ms. Masters? Aye. Ms. Masters votes aye. Dr. Bob McKinney? Aye. Dr. Nabal McKinney votes aye. Ms. Bugs? Aye. Ms. Bugs votes aye. Ms. Bush has not joined. Uh, Ms. Player Peters? Aye. Ms. Player Peters votes aye. Ms. Poopa Walker? Aye. Ms. Poopa Walker votes aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Ms. Tyler votes aye. Madam Chair, you have eight ayes. Thank you, Dr. Sevier. Um, I'm noticing that we don't have a, a director's report scheduled for today's meeting, but Dr. Battle, not to put you on the spot, I think we would love to hear from you if you have any announcements you'd like to make. Um, yes, congratulations and thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, it would be appropriate for me to share um, a little bit of information that has been shared with families today, um, just to make sure they are aware. So starting today, parents will receive or have received an email from Panorama Education with a family decision survey asking for their preference for in-person or virtual learning for their child once it's safe to start returning to our schools in person. We are asking families to complete the survey by next Tuesday, September 15th. They can be filled out on a computer, on a tablet, or smartphone with internet access and they will need to fill out a separate survey for each child enrolled in Metro Nashville Public Schools with the exception of charter schools. This survey will replace the preference survey that families um, received and or filled out back in July. The new survey will ask families to say if their child will attend in person or virtually for the rest of the school year. However, you will have an opportunity, families will have an opportunity to change their decision in December before the second semester begins in January if the family circumstances have changed or Nashville's COVID-19 situation has changed significantly. Um, if we do not receive a response to the decision survey from parents, we will assume the student will be attending in person, but please know that we are committed to continuing to provide a high quality virtual curriculum with support for families who choose to remain in the virtual setting. As for the timetable for returning in person, I'm going to continue to monitor the COVID-19 situation, but if there are no significant setbacks or spikes in cases over a sustained period of time, we can fully anticipate bringing back our earliest grades, um, starting with pre-K-2 after fall break. Then we'll bring, bring back other grades in a phase and approach that will allow us to monitor progress, make adjustments and acclimate both students and staff to this new environment. Um, some important information for families to consider when making this decision, masks over mouth and nose will be required for all students and staff. Bus transportation will be provided and students will be required to wear a mask. We encourage all families to use alternative forms of transportation if possible to allow for social distancing on buses.
Any student who exhibits symptoms of COVID-19, such as a temperature of 100.4 or above, a cough, shortness of breath, or sudden loss of taste or smell will not be able to attend. We will be asking parents to check students' temperatures from home prior to departing for school. Classroom sizes will be limited by the maximum requirements set forth by the Tennessee law. Student assignments will be aligned to current school staff and currently enrolled classes. Students will have access to extracurricular activities regardless of the structure selected, so that being in-person or virtual. Classrooms will be configured to maximize social distancing and prevent the spread of COVID-19, but most will not be able to create six feet of distance between students in normal settings. If a student or staff member tests positive for COVID-19, they will be required to self-isolate for 10 days. If a student or staff member is determined to be a close contact with a confirmed COVID-19 case, that person will be also required to quarantine for 14 days. In-person and virtual learning will be based on the Florida Virtual School curriculum to allow un uninterrupted learning if classes or schools must be closed for quarantining. As schools become aware of positive cases or the need to quarantine, families will be informed. However, we will not be able to share the name or names or personally identifiable information of the individuals who are positive due to student and health privacy laws. Some classes may be taught virtually while students are present in the school building due to personnel constraints. I say all that to make sure families make an informed decision that best meets the needs of their students. Again, we're asking that families fill out the survey by September 15th. If you, for some reason, do not receive a survey through Panorama, you can always fill out the survey through our website at mnps.org and access our frequently asked questions with responses. So um, again, you should receive that panorama survey um, by end of day. If for some reason you do not, you can always go directly to our website at mnps.org. Um, you can fill it out there. We will need a separate um, form for each student. So families, if you have multiple students, you will need to fill out their form for each student and feel free again to check out our frequently asked questions. Um, if there's additional information that will best inform families' decisions with in-person versus virtual. Thank you, Madam Chair, and at this time, I'll turn it back over to you. You're on mute. You're on mute. Christian, you're muted. I may have actually just been whispering, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for that. I mean, that, that was a lot of information, Dr. Battle, but I really appreciate that. Um, I know you all have been working hard to make sure we're meeting the needs of all students, that we're keeping staff and students and their families safe. Uh, do we have any questions from board members? before we move into announcements? I do. Ms. Go right ahead, Ms. Cooper Walker. Dr. Battle, when will you guys start implementing uh, the hiring of nurses? Um, Ms. Pupil Walker, we're in the process now of hiring nurses for all of our schools. So our goal is to provide a school nurse at every school uh, moving forward um, as early as after fall break. And so that's our plans. Our schools currently phasing in are all already staffed with school nurses. Okay. Thank you for that report tonight. Very exciting to start to look forward to returning our kids to school. Ms. Bugs, I have a question. Yes, I'm sorry, I can't see who that is, but it's go right Ms. ahead. It's Tyler, it's Ab Abigail Tyler. Oh, yes, Ms. Tyler, welcome, welcome, go right ahead. Hello, hey, Dr. Battle, I just had a question about, will the teachers be getting a separate survey so that they can decide what their preference is? Our staffing um, process for um, all of our employees will be tied directly to our accommodation survey um, that our, our staff has had access to um, before the start of the school year. And so we'll be providing accommodations um, for our staff based on um, their needs um, that have already been shared with their school principals. And if we, as we receive additional updates from um, staff members who are have a preference of um, virtual or in-person, we'll continue to make those accommodations. So um, that is um, a communication process that we've already had in place through our human resources department that we'll continue to leverage to make sure we're assigning um, our staff, um, our employees in a similar manner to our students. Okay, thank you. I have a question as well. This is Emily Masters. Sure, go right and welcome to you as well, Mrs. Thank Masters. You. Go right 
Thank you. Uh, so Dr. Battle, I'm just, this is from um, one of my constituents. Will, will there be a potential scenario where a teacher is asked to teach in person and virtually at the same time? Exactly. Our, um, our priority for staffing um, as we're moving forward and our phase in approach is to not um, have our staff double dipping between in person um, and virtual. Um, so our, our first priority is to not have that um, be our structure for scheduling um, staff. Um, is there potential there's potential um, depending on the number of students who select in person versus virtual but we're going to do what we can to ensure that our staff members are either solely um, virtual or solely in person that's great thank you madam chair this is rachel lamb may i ask a question madam vice chair you sure may and congratulations <laughs> thank you same to you um all right, so Dr. Battle, a common question that I'm already receiving is what will school look like, which of course you just gave a long description of, but what will school look like so I can make an educated decision on whether I want my student to attend or not? Are we going to be sending out a communication to parents as, and caregivers as well about what school will look like, or are we just to encourage these parents and caregivers to go to the FAQ to get the answers that you just provided? What parents um, will receive, um, they're going to receive two communications um, today, one from me, um, advising them of the preference survey and things to consider, like I've just discussed um, a few moments ago. They'll also receive the panorama survey um, and um, links to our website where we've answered um, as many of the frequently asked questions um, that uh, we have considered to help best inform um, our parents in making a decision um, regarding in-person or face-to-face. -face. Um, and so the Panorama email um, answers a lot of those questions and has a lot of that inform information already um, laid out for our families. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Tyler, go right ahead. Thank you. Um, I had one more question. Um, will the pacing of the online classes and the in-person classes be the same? Yes, as I, um, I mentioned in my announcement just a few moments ago, we will continue to leverage the Florida Virtual School content for continuity. Uh, we know that there is a likelihood of us having um, COVID cases um, in our schools once we open back up to um, the face-to-face. -face. And so we need to ensure that curriculum-wise, all students, regardless of in-person or virtual, will have the same access um, to the curriculum. So we will be leveraging the Florida Virtual School curriculum in both in-person and virtual. Thank you. I have a question, Madam Chair. Congratulations. Go right ahead, Dr. DeBaum McKinney. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Vado, um, would you please walk through what the ratios could potentially look like within our classrooms as students are looking to re-enter in the classes? And yes. as teacher ratios. Thank you. What was, this, what was the second part of your question? Um, Miss, okay. yeah, the student teacher ratios as as parents are looking to send students back to class. What what are those um, potential student teacher ratios so that parents can get an idea of what that will look like? Yes, so we will be following um, state law with regards to um, class sizes. This is also laid out for our families in the communication um, that went out today. Um, so the, the student to teacher ratios, um, we should fully expect um, that they will be similar to our traditional model. Um, so you could be looking at a one to 25, a one to 30, or one to 35 ratio um, based upon state law, um, given the, the needs of our students and whether they're choosing the in-person or virtual. So I think uh, what what we do want to be clear about is that the idea that class sizes would naturally or automatically be um, smaller um, may not be true and accurate. Uh, we will have to match um, the, the preferences of our families and students in the in-person versus virtual to the staffing um, needs. So there's not additional staffing to meet this, these needs. We'll be using the current school staff um, to determine who will be teaching in the virtual environment and who will be teaching in the face-to-face -face environment. Madam Chair, I'm sorry, Dr. McKinney, are you done? No, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sorry. 
Go right ahead, Dr. Gentry. Hey, uh, so just to, I'm just trying to clarify, you know, I, I usually get a lot of flack for not using simpler boiled down terminology here. So I just want to be clear. So we're not bringing in more teachers to keep class sizes down in social distancing. So in your initial statement, you shared that we will still be in, in compliance with the state ratios or number of teach, to teacher student ratio. So, uh, so let me ask it in a different way. If I have more students in a classroom, so if I have a classroom and more students want to be in my class in person, then we'll allow for social distancing. I still must allow those students to come into the classroom. Is that what we're saying? That's correct, that's okay. correct. So we're okay. not turning anybody away to correct, maintain correct. social distancing. Correct. Okay. We will. Our goal is to um, follow all of our social distancing pro protocols where feasible. So okay. if, if we're able to get to the six feet of distance between um, students, whether they be in the classroom environment or common spaces, we will, we will absolutely um, do that. But if we have a full class of students and we're unable to meet this um, six feet of social distancing, um, then we want to just be very clear that we won't be able to do that in every um, every scenario. Okay, so I just want people to be clear about what we're asking for and what the community, so parts of the community have been pushing for. Um, equity means I have to give everybody the opportunity for in-person uh, uh, learning if that's what the request has been. So we're accommodating everyone who requests in-person learning. So Correct. my final question will be if uh, I have a, you know, we have a parent that's really concerned about it. When will I know that my child's class is actually full? and my child will not be in a space where she is six feet away from another student at all times. So do I have, when will I have the opportunity to rescind my decision? Like, oh, I never thought that many people would wanna come, so I'm gonna keep my child home. So will I get, be aware of that in time to change my decision? Is that possible? No. So what we're doing right now is making sure that parents and families are aware um, of the measures we will be putting in place again, wherever we can um, allow for the six um, feet of distancing. We will do that. We're asking parents to declare um, giving those arrangements um, by September 15th. We are asking them to declare for the remainder of the school year. However, we are going to give our families an opportunity to change that decision prior to the start of the second semester. And so we want parents and families to consider the year-long um, commitment in virtual versus um, in person but we will allow a window of opportunity for parents to um, adjust after um, the start of the second semester this is very necessary because our schools um, will be finalizing putting the last final touches on their plans moving forward and we want to be sure that we can have the continuity of learning and the appropriate social distancing measures in place to support the students who will be in person and I appreciate the efforts and for, for me specifically, I can only imagine what it would be like. And I know many parents having concerns and challenges. I'm one of them <laughs> they are having challenges with, you know, remote learning with my child. Um, but I also know, number one, it's not all about me. Uh, and number two, the challenge it would be on my child to have her in school for three days, then out for some days and then back in again because of whatever the circumstances may be that require us as a district to start to make some different decisions. So thank you again um, for the amount of thought, uh, the amount of consistency uh, and persistence um, uh, to, to, to maintain your decisions uh, in accordance with what the data is telling us that's best and safest for our students and for our teachers and for our support staff. So thank you again for that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Gentry. Ms. Pupa Walker. Congratulations, Chairwoman Bugs. Thank you. Um, Dr. Ballard, really, this is just feedback I want to share. Parents would like to know, um, with some in, with some advance notice, what when you will be sequencing in grades uh, on tiers of grades, so they'll have time to plan for changing settings at home and work, you know, life balance and, really, and all of that good stuff. So, when you know a, a schedule for when you'll announce as as the grade levels begin to return, if you can just sort of give folks anticipation time to, to make decisions for their families. 
Absolutely, we will do that. And um, what um, we can share widely and what we've been communicating is we will start with our pre-K two students um, and then we'll move on to the rest of our elementary um, grade levels. And then we'll move next into middle school, um, into the secondary space with our middle school students and beyond. Um, so we'll be releasing um, additional dates and information for, fa for families so that they can plan accordingly and also for our staff so they can plan accordingly to know when those phase in dates will happen. Um, but again, we're going to make sure that we're being really um, efficient um, with our phase in approach because our goal is once we offer our in-person option that we can maintain a level of continuity um, for all of our students because we know that the disruption and the distraction um, that can be caused for particularly our youngest learners um, to be in school and then having to quarantine potentially uh, for 14 days um, if there is um, a number of cases uh, within their class or school. So uh, we're going to be very thoughtful about that but it's important for parents to know know um, that we're going to be slow and steady and efficient um, in our phase in so that once students are in that in-person option they can maintain it for the remainder of the semester and throughout the school year. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Devon McKinney. Uh, yes, thank you Dr. Battle and, and Chairman Bugs. Um, I would um, I, I have a follow up question related to um, our student teacher ratios. Um, would you uh, also review what the safety precautions will be within the schools? What is required by students um, and parents um, as they re enter schools? Um, yes, so we will be requiring masks over mouth and nose for all students and staff. Uh, we will be monitoring for COVID-19 symptoms, um, having a temperature over 104 or above, a cough, shortness of breath, or sudden loss of taste or smell. Uh, we will we'll be asking for students who are exhibiting any of those symptoms prior to to remain home, um, and we will closely monitor um, those symptoms do throughout the day. We'll also be asking our parents to check students' temperatures from home prior to departing for school. Um, and, and of course, that's one of the symptoms that we will be um, charting and asking students um, about to make sure that they're not exhibiting um, some of the signs and symptoms related to COVID-19. So so those are uh, mainly um, some of the measures we're taking um, into account. We will also be looking for and planning for consistencies around student schedules um, and how they transition throughout the day. Um, common areas, um, class changes, um, arrival and dismissal from school. Thank you. All right, Ms. Tyler, go right ahead. You're muted. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, so for, for families who have more than one child in different schools or even different classrooms within the same school, if one child is exposed and, and has to quarantine, are you going to require that their sibling also has to quarantine? And I guess the same thing would go with a teacher who has a child who is in a class who is quarantined. Will the teacher, since the teacher interacts with their own child, will they also have to quarantine? Um, yes, we will be following the close contact um, measures. And so if um, a student or staff um, is in contact with someone who is exhibiting um, symptoms or have tested positive for COVID-19, we will ask them um, also to um, follow the health department guidelines. So what will naturally happen in that space is that once there is a positive case um, and the health department follows up, the health department will will contact all of those individuals who will need to take further action through their contact tracing. And so our goal and our plan is to continue to work with the health department to help us with contact tracing and they will help identify um, those individuals. But you also bring up another good point that families should be aware of as we're opening up um, in our phase in approach, this will require us to limit visitors on campus. Um, so in addition to monitoring the surroundings at home and taking the appropriate action it's important for um, families to be aware that there will be um, um, no visitors on campus so that we can maintain our social distancing and our very own contact tracing um, to make sure we're keeping everyone as safe as possible. Thank you very much. Go right ahead, Ms. Right. Thank you. Um, so I guess my question is probably um, more closely related to Dr. Gentry's original question about um, headcounts and what will we do, will we be turning away 
students or anybody that wants to be inside of a school in person. Understandably, those children are not going to join our schools in you know, neat or complete classrooms of 20. So there's gonna be small pockets of classrooms that are smaller and we'll have to evenly distribute the students among teachers. For that reason, are we gonna be reviewing our 40, I think it's the 40 day head count that we usually have, where we go back and kind of see what is our enrollment and how does that apply to the number of students and teachers that we have in each school? Are we doing that? Are we waiting to do that until after we are in person or are we waiting until after we receive every one's um, notice on September 15th. Um, yes, every year we go through our 40 count process for balancing, uh, particularly staffing um, and our student-based budgeting across the district. Um, that date does not happen um, until um, October after we'll begin our phase in um, process, but we will continue with our 40 day counts and um, the necessary balancing for staffing. Uh, remember that 40 day count is based upon um, enrollment and schools are staffed accordingly. Um, so there should be um, complete alignment uh, or very closely to complete alignment um, to students and um, staff provided for the school. So we will be going through the 40 day count. That date um, is not um, going to um, happen until October um, after fall break. And so we'll be making adjustments um, at that point in time, as long as the conditions allow for us to continue on with our phased in approach, uh, we'll be well underway uh, with providing the in-person and virtual option. Okay. And do we have any suspected enrollment concerns, a decrease of enrollment or an increase of enrollment that we should be prepared for with our BEP funding? Um, no, not currently. Of course, um, that funding is um, a year, lags a year behind. So currently we're funded at um, last year's um, numbers. And so the same thing will happen going into, into next school year um, as well. We'll continue to monitor um, enrollment. Uh, we closely monitor enrollment throughout the entire school year with regards to um, class school counts that are over or above and also particularly grade levels that are above and beyond above or below and so we'll continue to monitor um, those numbers as we move forward with our 20-day count but also with our our 40-day count to make sure that we have a balance of staffing across um, the district i think um, you know what we're seeing across the country right now is shifts um, in enrollment um, based upon the needs of our students and families so we'll continue to monitor that and we'll monitor and adjust that um, as we approach that 40 day count. Okay, I guess my request is that if we have a suspected decrease in enrollment that we are notified as a board and that we can have a report on what is the impact on our BEP funding for that and what are the potential impacts that that decrease in enrollment might have, whether it's an individual school or of course across the school system. Yes, um, and of course that number is based on the 40 day count. So um, right. as we approach that um, date and that count, we'll be sure to update the board. Thank you. Mrs. Tyler? Mute, unmute, it's okay. I mean, I, hit, I turned the camera on and I thought the mute, anyway. <laughs> Um, so I, I had a question about transportation. If our buses, once we phase in and our buses are actually picking up students coming through, are they still going to be running those routes, bringing food to the families who have chosen virtual? And how are we going to be able to work the timing on that? Yes, our goal um, is to be able to also balance out our transportation with those who will be transporting um, students and those that will be providing uh, meals. Of course, our typical um, arrival and dismissal times are different from our lunch um, blocks. So we should be able to leverage, continue to leverage our um, transportation during that time. And um, as was communicated last week, we did receive some good news that we will be able to provide no cost meals to all students regardless of the school they attend. Um, and so we have uh, we will be continuing to share that information out to um, schools and to families because we want our um, students for sure to take advantage of the opportunity um, for those meals. And we'll be providing additional updates with regards to some shifting we'll be doing to also provide meals over the weekend. Um, so more information to come uh, from our, from our um, operations team with regards to that, but our goal is to continue to provide um, meals um, in through our school cafeterias and through our bus routes. 
great. Thank you so much. All right, Dr. Bob McKinney. Uh, hi, Dr. Battle. I just wanted to take a moment to um, thank you and acknowledge the great work of providing the in-person um, tech support that's being provided across the district. Um, I, I talked with you about providing one in District 4, and your response was very quick, um, and we were able to get one at Donaldson Middle, so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, in a follow-up to that, I just want to make sure that parents understand that, they're, um, that they are, there are in-person tech uh, centers. Um, if you're having uh, techn uh, technological difficulty, um, and if you, Dr. Battle, could let them know where those sites are, um, as well as if they're still having problems with um, with computers and need to switch out or, or get any support, how does that work? Um, and then a follow-up to that, I'm sorry, I'm getting it all in one sentence, is computers for teachers. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, uh, what we've been able to get and what that rollout will look like to support our teachers as well? Yes. Um, we have launched um, several of our help uh, sites across the district. Um, we do have seven sites and I'm going to try to list them. And if I miss one, the team will chime in. Um, those sites are at Mount View Elementary. They're at Tusculum Elementary, Donaldson Middle School, Jerry Baxter Middle School. And I'm missing a couple. So team help me out here. I know there's four of the seven. Robert Churchwell Elementary School. Robert Churchwell um, and Glenview Elementary School. Um, so I think that captured um, them all. We do have seven sites across the district. And families, please, 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 if you need support, if you need assistance, anything from a minor, if it's a password reset up through assistance with technology and devices, we are here to support you. And part of those, us launching those help centers was in response to the feedback that we received um, from you. So please come out um, and see as our team is standing ready to support any way that we can. All of our additional lines of support continue to be available to families. So if you just need to make a phone call, you still have access to do that. But we're, we're at each of those sites um, in person um, daily to support families as possible. Um, so again, those slides, sites are Glenview Elementary, Tusculum Elementary, Donaldson Middle, Churchill Elementary, Jerry Baxter Middle School, and Mount View Elementary School. So come out again and support, um, get the support you need. Um, to your second question uh, with regards to teacher technology, um, our teachers this week are in the process of prepping their devices um, for an exchange next week. Um, so we have received our teacher devices um, in-house. Um, they're being imaged and, and, and being prepped to um, deployed to teachers starting next week. So our teachers are taking the rest of this week, um, downloading their, their files and whatever they need to save off their current um, computer. And starting on Monday next week, um, our teachers received a survey to sign up for a location and a site um, to come and exchange their devices. So teachers, if you're listening, make sure your devices are prepped and ready to go. Um, device charger, and we'll trade that out for your new updated um, device for you to continue to engage and support your students. So um, Dr. Nama McKinney, I answered, I think both of your questions, if there was another one in there, please remind me. No, you answered both of those, but I have one more um, question or I wanna make it public as well, is for our new, um, our, our new centers that we opened up with the YMCA. I was able to visit one of those centers today and would just like to get your um, report out on how they went, uh, how they've gone starting the first day after Labor Day to support families. Yes, our um, executive director of extended uh, program and team uh, went out to visit each of our sites today to make sure our students um, were set up and that they were settled they were settled in um, to their new sites and are were being successful in the virtual learning space. Um, so we had some on the ground supports um, today, and I think they made around to just about every site um, to make sure that our students and families had exactly uh, what they needed. Um, and so we will tomorrow be. Um, uh, providing some additional supports to the YMCA sites to make sure even more efficiencies are in place with getting students logged on um, and also to make sure the social distancing uh, measures are in place as we have planned and communicated. 
Thank you. I just want to thank you for all the work that you're doing to listen to the community and meet the community's needs and the rapid response in which you're doing it to, to, to make this work. Um, I, I have a second grader, so I, I really understand personally um, the, the challenges that we're having in virtual learning, but I also want to acknowledge the great work that our teachers and our principals are doing to meet the needs of the students, as well as our district are doing to provide those wraparound stores, uh, resources to help support our parents um, and families in this effort. So thank you so much, Dr. Battle, to you and your team for the great work that you're doing in the community. Thank you, Dr. Nabal McKinney. And again, to families, I know that you have questions. I know that you want as much information as possible to make informed decisions as you're completing your preference surveys. Um, so please um, be on the lookout again for two communications today regarding um, this decision process. Also, feel free to check out our frequently asked questions um, to make sure that um, you have the answers to, to your questions as you're deciding for your child or children that will continue to serve here in Metro Schools. Uh, any last questions before? Go, go right ahead, Ms. Tyler. Um, thank you. I just had one last question. The, the um, Dr. Nabba McKinney's question about the teacher laptop reminded me. So we're still getting waves of student laptops in. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, as uh, previously communicated, we for the 70,000 devices that we purchased through the Mayor's CARES Act funds, uh, we will continue to get shipments of devices through the end of the semester. Okay. However, um, we do have devices and have continued to have devices on hand to provide um, to students. So as um, students are in need, just because we're still getting devices in, that does not translate into us not having devices to provide for students. If there is a student or family in need, we have a device for you. We have a hotspot for you if you are in need. And then as we get the last um, set of those devices in and we get the kind of the ETA on those, we will begin to deploy deploy um, all of the new devices and through our equity uh, matrix to make sure every MMPS student um, has a device um, as we move forward. So we'll begin to shift from a need to making sure that every student um, has one of the new devices that have been purchased on their behalf. Great. I, I love hearing that we are, we're using that equity framework there. That was going to be a question. You already answered it. So I just I really want to thank you for making sure that you are constantly keeping in mind all of our all of the students from the ones that are um, at our most at risk and vulnerable. And I really appreciate that you are taking care of them while you're listening to everybody else. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Ginger. Just quickly, uh, Dr. Battle, did you mention the times that um, parents or families can come for tech support at those seven sites? Oh, let's see. Um, Dr. Springer, are you on the call to remind us of the actual time that the sites are open? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the actual sites are from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and we are ready to serve. Thank you, Dr. Springer. You're welcome, Dr. Battle. Well, thank you colleagues for these questions. Thank you, Dr. Battle, Dr. Springer, all the MMPS staff for, for stepping in. Um, I do remember getting um, a survey saying that the community, if they wanted to support MMPS in this way and uh, join us at some of these IT sites that they, that they could, is that still an option? Because I love the benevolence of our community. Some people are really stepping up to make sure that they're speaking up on the behalf and you know advocating for some of our more vulnerable populations, but that's still a possibility, right? It absolutely is. Um, and so we, um, if anybody is interested, uh, please reach out to us. We, you can reach directly out to Dr. Springer, um, who is coordinating um, this effort. We do have a lovely sign-up sheet um, to request any volunteers who are willing to assist. Um, and you don't have to be a tech expert. I've been out um, at the sites as well and um, tried to offer as much support as I can. And so I can tell you for sure, you don't have to be ex a, a tech expert um, to help anyone. And so if you are interested, if you're available, um, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get you connected. And I do want to remind us, I, I think I mentioned seven sites. There are six sites um, that we have across um, the district. Thank you for that, Dr. Nabal McKinney. 
Thank you, and I apologize for all the questions here, but I just want to make sure that, that we are addressing this. Um, one question is in reference to, um, just so that, that the public knows, starting today, we have started the, the process of phasing in students, starting with our exceptional ed um, uh, students, and then we will continue to phase in as COVID um, and safety and health of our, of our community allows us to, correct? Um, actually, the, the first day is tomorrow. So, tomorrow. Okay. Um, yes, Thank our you. first, uh, we're starting kicking off our phase in process tomorrow with our exceptional education students, and we will continue on that path, as you've mentioned, um, as long as COVID 19 um, and the metrics allow us to do so. So, we are officially um, off into our phase in approach as of tomorrow, and we'll continue um, throughout and beyond um, fall break as conditions allow. So keep our fingers crossed as we continue to do so for, for the health and safety of everyone involved. Yes. Um, and then the second question that I that that, that I, I don't want to leave without asking is about our athletic programs in fall sports. Can you talk a little bit about uh, where we are with fall athletics um, and what that phased in approach will be as well? Yeah, so I think the um, the first important um, note here for families as they're selecting the in-person versus the virtual, um, as we continue on and, and are able to phase in um, other grades, we will not be limiting extracurricular activities based upon the structure chosen. So as we're able to move forward with our phase in approach um, now and beyond fall break, students, all students will have access to extracurricular activities regardless of the in-person or the virtual virtual um, selection. So that's important for families to be aware of. Uh, with regards to our postponement, um, again, we um, have never been in a phase of cancellation, but we have postponed due to our current metrics to make sure conditions allow for a safe um, continuation of our athletic programs. We will continue to monitor those matrix and we'll be updating um, any of our coaches or sponsors um, in the days and weeks to come. We typically provide an update at least um, at minimum once a week and so we'll continue with those efforts and those updates um, to coaches and sponsors so they can know what is to be expected as we move forward. Thank you. Oh, our, our virtual clubs did kick off today. Um, so this is a new venture for uh, Metro Nashville Public Schools. We, we have launched virtual clubs for any and all students um, that are currently enrolled. And so if there are students or families interested, please feel free to connect with our virtual um, clubs. They uh, again kicked off today and we've already heard some great feedback um, about our students level of engagement. And we'll continue those um, for in-person and virtual students. Thank you again for all of this, Dr. Battle. It's been reiterated, so I won't, you know, pander on it too long, but thank you for just listening. Thank you for developing plans that are thorough and that are ready to pivot at any point. Uh, I'll do a last call for questions. and appropriate thing time. Thank you again, Dr. Battle. Thank you, colleagues. We'll move on into announcements then. We'll start with District 1, Dr. Sharon Gentry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, congratulations. Um, just a couple of things. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, I missed the opportunity to mention this at the last meeting, but I wanted to uh, thank Dr. Battle uh, and the district for um, continuing our uh, uh, relationship with SEIU through our memorandum of understanding. I saw on the consent agenda um, that we did approve that. Uh, there was a time when we did not have one. And so I, I thank you, Dr. Battle, for uh, maintaining that relationship and continuing to engage um, our in, employees uh, that are part of NSEIU um, uh, with that memorandum of understanding. And again, as the one with uh, MNEA, continuing that relationship and that collaboration um, to always consider um, how we can improve our work environment and how we can allow um, those employees to contribute um, and help us reach our goal and recognize our vision and mission for uh, public schools. Um, I, I, I do want to um, uh, say that I hope that as people are watching what we are doing here in uh, Metro National Public Schools with re uh, regards to um, maneuvering through this pandemic and still doing our best uh, to deliver quality and equitable 
um, educational experiences for all our students that we're watching the news around us uh, and, and watching the decisions that are being made and unmade and made and unmade um, in other school systems, not only K through 12, um, but on the university level as well. And I hope you are paying attention um, to those populations of students that large uh, conferences are willing to sacrifice uh, <laughs> uh, in the name of whatever is pushing the decision and those that they uh, are willing to continue to protect. So these decisions, again, uh, I hope the public understands are not easy. Now, it is everyone's desire uh, for us to be in person, in the classroom. The teachers want it, the students want it, I want it, <laughs> the parents definitely want it. Um, but again, it's about doing what's best um, and creating an equitable environment for all of our students. Uh, I'm gonna start an announcement that I'm not gonna be able to finish because I couldn't find my notes about all of the, the pieces, but in our uh, last trustees meeting, um, an announcement was shared that we have a partnership that's gonna allow for some remote mental health support uh, for our students. And so it is a, a company that has provided a, a software platform uh, that we're piloting at three of our high schools, Pearl Cone, Whites Creek, and Maplewood. Uh, I just wanna give big kudos for that. Um, getting that, that relationship and that agreement going. We know that with all that we are experiencing as parents during COVID, our students are experiencing some mental challenges and emotional challenges as well. They miss their friends. They miss the, the, the camaraderie. They miss the, the fellowship. And so um, we wanna make sure that they are supported, not just academically, but emotionally as well. And so this is a part of that social and emotional support that the district is providing. And again, piloting that at Pearl Cone, Whites Creek and Maplewood High School. So uh, again, Dr. Battle and team, thank you for everything. Love being partners with you in this work. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm done. Thank you so much, Dr. Gentry. All right, uh, Vice Chair, Mrs. Rachel Ann Elrod. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Um, I am proud to have been elected Vice Chair um, of the board and I appreciate my colleagues' support and belief in that leadership. And I know that y'all have heard me say that we do policies and procedures, not personnel and programs with governance, not grandstanding. And so I'm glad that you aren't tired of me saying it. And um, I will continue to do so. Um, I ran for school board for so many reasons and I was knowledgeable of the time commitment, but it is a lot to ask of anyone, particularly of a young mother. And so I am so impressed that my newest colleagues, this is their first meeting. So many of them have this extra responsibility now. And I am also excited that Madam Chair and myself are also uh, mothers of young children. So kudos to us doing all the extra, mothering all the extras. Um, on that note, I wanna say that again, we understand like Dr. Gentry said, that remote learning is frustrating and we as board members are not immune to some of that mental load that it takes. And we um, are empathetic and sympathetic to it. Um, however, we would like a consistent process and classroom environment for our students. And as so many other schools and districts and colleges even are finding out that it's just unpredictable. And so I appreciate Dr. Battle and MMPS uh, doing data and science-based decision-making and helping that lead us in our decisions on what is best for our students and our teachers and our staff and keeping them safe first and making sure that we're able to provide that consistent and equitable classroom environment no matter what is going on outside of it so thank you so much thank you mrs elrod um mrs emily booth masters welcome to your first official meeting hello thank you um i do have some announcements to share so um i was in that insurance trust meeting on august 26th as well and i thought um it'd be nice to share some good news that came out of that um mmps is the recipient of a couple of national level awards um, one is from the validation institute in the large group category we received a gold medal for um, showcasing our health care programs that demonstrate measurable health outcomes. 
Um, we also received an honorable mention for the second year in a row from the C. Everett Coop National Health Award. This is another outstanding worksite health promotion award. Um, and I think what's most notable about both of these awards and the fact that MMPS received them is that they are not only about health outcomes, but they're also about um, transparency in cost and an economic impact. So I think we can all appreciate that we're getting some great results through our health and wellness programs for our employees um, at a reasonable cost. Um, and I know that the insurance trust works really hard to make that happen and ensure that, that we can all be safe and well. So I was very appreciative of that information. Um, and with that in mind, I just wanna remind everyone we have exactly 18 school days just 18 school days um, before we begin that larger phasing in of students right after fall break. Um, so I would just encourage all of Nashville that following those 18 school days when we have fall break, let's all um, continue to mask up, follow social distancing measures, and ensure that we don't set ourselves back when it comes to COVID and the metrics, and that we are actually able to begin that phasing in. 18 days, we can do it. We can do 18 more days if we can all just follow the practices we know we need to follow so that we can get those kids back to the in-person schooling if that's what they should choose after fall break. Um, and then one more, um, I would encourage anyone who's interested to read up on our state house bill 2818. Um, it passed the house in March, the Senate in March, and the governor signed it in April, and it allows our state Department of Education to um, follow emergency measures having to do with COVID. So that means that when it comes to graduation requirements, when it comes to funding and funding formulas around attendance, um, it gives our state Department of Education um, a lot of leniency when it comes to ensuring that we can still all get the funding that we need, make sure that students can graduate without necessarily having to follow all of the, the strict standards that are in place when we're not in the midst of a pandemic. So um, that's House Bill 2818. Um, and I just would encourage anyone who is interested in doing so to let your state lawmakers know that you would like to see that enforced to ensure that our students can still achieve the outcomes that they need um, so that this won't affect them in a long-term way. Thank you. Thank you for those, Mrs. Masters. Um, Dr. Bethina uh, Navar McKinney. Sorry, was making working with the mute. Thank you, Chairman. Um, first, I would like to um, welcome uh, Miss Abigail Tyler and Miss Emily Masters uh, to your first board meeting. I remember that just shortly of a month ago um, in entering that first meeting as well. So I want to uh, congratulate you and again welcome you to your very first board meeting. Um, and, and welcome you as a part of uh, the school board. Um, second, I would like to, um, I wanna take a moment and recognize um, a member in, in District 4, which consists of the Donaldson Hermitage and Old Hickory area. Um, I wanna recognize Nicole Valentine Vaughn, the Community Achieves Manager um, at Two Rivers Middle School. She has done some amazing work for not just Two Rivers Middle, but schools across the district um, in providing the wraparound services that, are, that, that support our students and their families. Um, she has also done amazing work in pulling together our businesses and community um, partners um, and nonprofits. Um, to work in supporting um, the work in our community. And I have heard nothing and seen nothing but great things uh, coming from her and the work that she is doing in the community. So I wanna take a moment to recognize her. Um, I also would like to um, just say for the record, I, you know, I'm a parent of a second grader um, in MMPS in a school over here in District 4. I, I completely empathize and sympathize with parents and the struggles that they are having and facing with virtual learning. Um, 
and and understand um, and will be the first one to admit that in-person learning is best for our students. However, I fully support Dr. Batto and the measured approach that she has given towards returning our students um, to school um, and returning to school in the healthiest and safest way for, for everyone, um, including our students, teachers, um, and support staff, as well as our district community. And so I, I just want to to kind of help us understand that while while we are personally and individually facing challenges and we see the frustrations that our, our children are facing um, at the board level, at the community, I mean, at, at, at the district level, um, we have to look at it with the 86,000 or 86,000 plus students that we serve and 10,000 plus staff to ensure that we are doing it in the most consistent um, and, and phased in approach that we can um, to protect everyone in, as in involved. And so we wanna do it in a way that reduces the disruption that could potentially occur um, within our community. Um, so as um, Ms. Masters had said, we have 18 days. Um, so within that, that time before we start school, please community really support us in helping to get that, get our students back in school by doing the things that we need to do to keep those COVID metrics down um, and really support us in the effort. This is a community effort. This is not the district versus the community. This is the community as a goal. Our, our goal should be centered around our students and our families and doing what's best to, 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 to get everyone um, in the safest way possible. And we need to support our staff in doing so as well. So this is a collective effort. This is not an us, and I'll repeat it again, this is not an us versus them. This is a collective effort where our community and our city needs to come together to support this so that we can get our students back to in-person learning um, and provide that in, in, again, the healthiest and most safest way that we can do so. Um, and then um, that'll be all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Nevada Kenny. Um, Mrs. Bush, has she logged on? Ms. Bush is not here. All right, uh, Ms. Frida Player Peters. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome our newest board members as we kick off the first official term of our new board. So welcome um, to the board family. And we're so glad uh, for school board member masters and school board member uh, Tyler to join us um, on their first official meeting. Great job, great questions. Um, you guys actually took all my questions. So good job on your first meeting and, and jumping in with full feet forward um, as, you, as you begin your term uh, with the rest of us. Um, Second, uh, congratulations to Chair Bugs and to Vice Chair Elrod. Um, look forward to your leadership and um, looking for us to um, to guiding into this new term during this pandemic times, these unusual times. And um, congratulations on your on your election, um, Dr. Battle, um, and to the senior team, and to central office, and to the teachers and support staff. Thank you for the past month. I know it has not been an easy ride, particularly with virtual learning. Um, dealing with the issues. Uh, we, see, I see your hard work um, and seeing that the leadership during this time is not easy. Um, but thank you for what you're doing, for what you're working, working um, many, many long hours and weekends and nights uh, to make sure we're guiding our students to the healthiest way possible and that they have the um, education that they need first um, into extra activities. To the students, um, there are several of us on the school board who were collegiate athletes and we understand what you're going through. Um, we do not take um, what we're going through lightly. Um, extracurricular activities are very important of your um, scholastic career and we want to make sure that you have the healthiest academic and athletic career possible. Um, we do not take decisions lightly. We know Dr. Battle does not take the decisions lightly and that what we're trying to do is make sure that you are athletes for the rest of your life not for this moment in time. And we're making some tough um, decisions as adults, um, as a system. We, we have to look at all 85,000 kids that we have to. We have many, particularly in my district, we have many children who live in multi-generational um, households. Um, and we don't want you to be a vector um, to you or your family. 
um, and have a unnecessary um, sickness or, or issue because of we're being thoughtful to make sure measures in place that you have a long and healthy life. And so we want to get you out into your extra activities as soon as possible. But we want to make sure you're safe and you're healthy and that you have a great academic career and have a great athletic career. So please be known that um, we are we are very sympathetic and we know it's not um, easy or comfortable and you've worked hard that's the beauty of athletics to work so hard um, for a task and for your sport and to represent your sport and to do well in your sport and we want to get you out as soon as possible but we'll make sure it's safe and it's safe for everyone um, and everyone can have a healthy and happy athletic career so just wanted to say that we hear you we feel for you and we will make sure that we have a smooth transition um, compared to other school districts that have been out there on a high school level and on a collegiate level that had pull athletes and have athletes have leering effects that may affect their athletic career not only for this moment in time but for the rest of the career and so we just want to make sure to the students we hear you and we're listening and we're trying to get to you as soon as possible so you can have a successful particularly for the seniors a very successful career so i just want to say that and we just came off of labor day yesterday and as a labor um activists of myself and had career in the labor movement. Um, happy Labor Day to all the employees of MNEA, SEIU, and steel workers. Um, thank you for all the work and advocacy you did. Like Dr. Gentry said, I was working for SEIU when we did not have an MOU. And I remember that fight right now. And I'm really glad that um, Dr. Bowd administration had a very productive relationship with um, the labor union. So hopefully the steel workers will be next in line having a productive um, MOU and structure that employees have a voice. Um, Sometimes there are some tough and heart heart fault um, conversations, but we do it out of love and consider um, love and concern out of our employees that they have a healthy and productive career. So this happy Labor Day, belated Labor Day to our unions, and we're glad that we're having a productive um, relationship. Um, an effective relationship with our employees and with our labor unions and our employees to make sure they have anything. So wear your mask so we all can get back to school um, as possible and we have a safe environment. Thank you. You're muted. You're muted. Again, I was whispering, mind your beeswax, but uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, Mrs. Frida Player, Player Peters. Uh, Mrs. Jeannie Poopa Walker. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, really quickly, um, I want to give a shout out to all of our te special education teachers who are leading the way with the reentry, uh, the teachers and the para pros who will be serving close to 700 students by the end of the month with IEPs and in special education settings. Big thank you to them. Um, I also wanted to just quickly ask everyone to encourage high school students. Let me turn my camera on. High school students. Um, in MNPS, any high school student that they can join the Project Lit Book Club led by Jared Amato meets twice a week. You can learn about it at, at projectlit.com, project C-O-M-M, C -O -M -M, um, and sign up via Schoology. I just, it's such an opportunity. I hope every high school student in the city takes part. I think it'd be an amazing thing. And then Pencil Foundation is helping our career academies um, with their ninth, our like 12 years of uh, ninth grade career academies this year. It will be virtual. They're looking for three minute videos from partners, parents, anyone, teachers showcasing their career. If you want to know more, check out Pencil's Twitter feed. They have information about how to upload your video to them. And then the last thing I want to do is honor Kent Weeks, who passed away uh, this summer. He was a longtime resident of District 8 and a community leader. Mr. Weeks was a Fulbright Scholar and received his law degree at Duke University where he met his first wife and where his granddaughter now attends. Mr. Weeks practiced law in Nashville, but he also taught public policy, school law, and higher ed policy at Peabody at Vanderbilt, where he focused on education legal issues, which was informed by his students. He was awarded the Peabody College Roundtable Award for Excellence in Teaching, wrote several books, and one of his proudest accomplishments was to serve as general counsel to Africa University in Zimbabwe for over 20 years. 
But importantly for this group here today, Mr. Weeks chaired the first elected school board in Metro Nashville Public Schools, a pivotal time in Nashville, where as they say in my favorite musical, Hamilton, every experiment sets a precedent. In that role, he helped the district arrive at a settlement of the 28 year desegregation litigation. He was an example of leadership and service on behalf of our city. Our hearts go out to his wife, Karen, his children, his six grandchildren, Thank you for sharing him with MNPS in our formative years. That concludes my report. Beautiful. Thank you, Mrs. Poopa Walker. Uh, and Mrs. Tyler, our last newest board member. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, first, I want to thank all of you guys for your warm welcome. I really appreciate it. It's um, been very kind. Um, and I just wanted to encourage all of our parents who um, are still kind of wading through some of the issues that I, like myself with a second grader and a sixth grader have also done too, please contact your teacher first. Um, just see what you can do as far as wiggle room and flexibility. Our teachers are very flexible and adaptive and, and willing to try to meet you halfway. So um, I think one way we can be supportive of one another is, is to be aware that we are trying to take care of the problem before we complain about the problem. Um, so I, I really want to encourage everybody to reach out to your teacher if you if you have an issue. Um, and then I want to also thank all of our food service staff who have been working overtime to prepare so that we make sure that every single child is able to have food. They're going to have that meal. I know Dr. Battle mentioned it earlier, um, and I'm, I'm so excited about that and so grateful for that. And, and I just know that it, it's exciting, but it also means a lot of extra work for our food services staff to get it all set up. So I really wanted to just take a moment and thank you guys. I know you're working hard. Thank you. Um, and then finally, just reiterate what everybody has already said about we are in this together this is a community effort please wear your mask please be smart about where you go and make sure that you are um, doing your best to keep the spread low so that we can all get back as soon as possible thank you thank you uh, and thank you again to all of my colleagues the entire MNPS staff for all that you do each day but I in an effort to not be redundant, but to uh, maximize the impact of this moment, to remind everyone that, you know, we just thank you. Students, parents, teachers, staff, it's hard. It's hard. We understand that we are here to support you as best we can. So please just reach out. Uh, I think that cannot be overstated. Again, to my colleagues, thank you. I'm so honored to be able to serve in this capacity as a former MNPS student, as a former MNPS teacher, just being able to maximize my impact. Um, elevate concerns, make sure that my district is served as best I can. I just really, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm acutely aware of inequity and, you know, I want to battle, do battle with it so that we better serve the needs of all students. But I also know that I should never, ever allow my own personal goals or agenda to overshadow or supersede the priorities we collectively establish. And right now we put a stake in the ground that our most immediate concern is keeping all 86,000 students, all 11,000 staff and their MNPS families safe. So we were elected as individuals and I expect healthy dialogue that elevates our different concerns but uh, we are a governing body that serves people in the system collectively so maintain your individual strengths and allow them to shine in ways that will best support our nine different districts but with that in mind I will be sending out the list of committees uh, especially for our newest members you may not be aware of the different types of committees we have for the community at large listening we engage in, in either ad hoc or consistent committee meetings to make sure we're doing the work of the district to make sure we're offering supports where we can where we can to make sure we're we're troubleshooting if we need to we sometimes use these as work sessions so I'll be sending out that list of committees if you have ideas suggestions concerns or if you would like to be considered to become a chair of that committee colleagues please reach out let me know uh, I do think it's also time for us to broach the idea of a work session the idea of a retreat and yes the idea of public participation being able to come back in as adults if we can't come in as adults we shouldn't be expecting our students or our staff to come back in so I would love to begin conversations around what that might look like uh, the school board phasing back into our building so I'm just I'm open to suggestions but we are ready to move forward it's going to be difficult it's going to be hard but this is what we were elected to do so I appreciate you with all of that said, uh, be there no further business. This meeting is adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, 
visit nashville.com.